Hello, big news from our friends over at DistroKid. They now have an app. This app works on iOS and Android, of course, and it's available in the Apple Store and Google Play Stores and all the stores where you buy apps. Go check it out. It's got a lot of cool features. You can upload new releases. You can get notified when you've earned royalties. Awesome. You can withdraw from the app via push notifications. A little dangerous for me, but rad. Anyways, go check it out. It's all at distrokid.com slash app. And don't forget, you can still get 30% off your DistroKid account by going to distrokid.com slash VIP slash tour stories. Have a great one. We would like to celebrate our friends and supporters over at isotope.com. Find makers of audio software for repair, mixing, and mastering. You know their goods. RX-10, Neutron 4, Ozone 11, Nectar 4. Chris and I love them. We use them. And we know you'll love them too. And right now, they're having a New Year's sale on many of their software bundles. Go to isotope.com and check it all out. And use code RUIN10 when you check out to get your discount. Again, it's I-Z-O-T-O-P-E dot com. And enjoy. Hey, Hayden. Hello. How you doing, man? I'm doing uh, good. It's a good day. Good. That's an Ice Cube lyric right there. It's a good day. Nice. Where are you? I'm in Toronto, Ontario. Ah, how's Toronto these days? I haven't been there in two years, maybe? It's it's okay. It, it it had a few uh rough years where there was seemed to be not a huge point in in living in the city, but I imagine that happened to most of the great cities. But overall Toronto's pretty awesome. Yeah. And you live in the in the city proper? Yeah, in the yeah, in the, the west side of the city. But yeah, it's it would be proper Toronto. Cool. Sure. What's the music vibe like these days and in- toronto i i know for a fact that it's healthy and there's a ton of young talent uh that's happening and there are exciting things going on but i only get a small taste of it you know because i'm home a lot of the time with my kids and if i have a night to do something i i generally will work on songs or get things done so unfortunately right. i don't get to see a lot of what's happening but you know a lot of older musicians will be like you know go on about the good old days and that there's no good music anymore but that's just not true yeah i i feel the same way <laughs> yeah. in the sense that uh I know there maybe is a ten uh, in the back of my mind every once in a while. I was like, ah, god damn it, there's no good music anymore. But then I, I was just out last week and I saw some band I'd never heard of and from Seattle and they were so good. I'm an idiot. Yeah. I'm just out of Amazing. touch. Amazing, funny. Yeah. So you've been a professional musician, as it were, uh, for at least 25 years. Have you always operated out of Toronto? Yes, and I've operated out of the same studio, uh, which is in my house, basically, for the last 22 years. Oh, wow. All right. I'm really not that adventurous. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, That's okay. Uh, I don't know if you have to be adventurous to make such a good record. This new record, Are We Good?, which is hard for me to say without a question mark. adventurous or not you've made a great record man it's so good thank you thank you so much and um and i want to of course talk about up record and um and i'm going to make a disclaimer now i've experienced your record just as much as watching the videos as listening to the songs and i'm not necessarily a video person i'm kind of like whatever videos are fine this is not like that it's special what you do and i also want to talk about um that aspect of your um expression but first it's been about eight years seven years between records what have you been doing yeah that's a (laughs) it's a multifaceted answer that i could give to that and it's a, a combination of a project that i worked on for a year and a half that didn't see the light of day and then um, a series of 
starts and stops uh, and thinking I had a record and then not, and then thinking I had one and then going back. And then the, the pandemic created a situation where the, I didn't feel the need to put something out and just have it, you know, not be able to tour. So that took up a bunch of the time. And that all in combination with my complex uh, family life at home. Um, I have a 14 year old daughter with, uh, with exceptionalities, a uh, developmental disability, and she's incredible, but she, there's a lot of, uh, care giving and effort mm-hmm. going on at my house uh, that makes it very hard to keep like, Oh, I'm going to go to the studio for eight hours for the next 10 days. It's just, it's not, not my reality. So that's, it's, it's a combination of all of those things. Right. And then next thing you know, of course, eight years is nothing with all of that happening. Well, yeah. again, congrats on making it through. Yeah. yeah in yeah. some ways it's just the, yeah, that's the achievement is actually having something that's actually going to be coming out. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I do, I do think as I've gotten older and being a parent is, is a huge part of it is that I have an extreme amount of patience now that I didn't when I was 23 putting out records. Uh, things were very immediate back then. I didn't overthink things and I didn't have patience. And now I, I can be like, I'll listen to uh, one mix like 900 <laughs> times. I'll be like, yeah. <laughs> content with that situation it's not good ah that's uh you can that can be interpreted as an attention to detail also (laughs) yeah yeah. let's let's call it that (laughs) and not obsession did you just lock in once you started making this record or did you trickle these songs and kind of put them together like did you one day start writing a tune and then the, the rest followed quickly uh you know my joke about this record is that when I started it, uh, Obama was still the president. Oh my goodness! You know, so let's put that into perspective. Okay. <laughs> so let, a lot of things have changed <laughs> in, in the world since I started this record, but um, there were pockets of very condensed, inspired time. You know, like if my wife and I could figure out, you know, okay, there's like there, there's a week where you can go up and work in a cabin or whatever, and just mm-hmm. like do it. The whole yeah. time, I would be extremely um, productive, make incredible use of my creative time, and I would come out with, if I was at home, be like four months worth of sure s- stuff yeah. that I was excited about, and then I would take that really super condensed, inspired stuff, and slowly add to it and work on it when I had the time. So it was kind of like that; these like really great spurts and then the long drawn out and unfortunately in the long drawn out periods you kind of you have a tendency uh to lose momentum start overthinking blah 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 so yeah and i think that that's um i haven't had much pressure in my life to actually write an entire record or you know or lyrics myself uh i i'm i collaborate largely but when i am working on my own stuff and as a parent, um, you've I've found this practical version of of defeating creative block by just scheduling the time to not be able to do anything. And if you do that enough times, if you have four days at the cabin, it might be two days at the cabin where you're just like, uh, I'm not doing shit. And then, yeah. but you have it seems like uh, you have to go through that to get to the next part. Yeah and being forced to plan that with family and other things in your life, it kind of, it, or it can battle the, a creative block. I think just having to do practical things. It's a complex thing though, because I, I didn't, I don't really have writer's block per se. I just like, sometimes it's not the right time to be doing something. And I don't know. I don't really put too much pressure on myself if I'm not inspired I've been doing it long enough to know that there's going to be periods where you're into creating music and when you're not and if you're a bit patient with that you know it'll it'll 
always come back. I mean, let's all cross my fingers on that. Sure. I mean, but but not true writer's block, I guess. Right. I don't know. Um, you worked with a couple of the national fellas on this record. You collaborated yes. with, with Aaron and Matt. Are you old pals with them? How'd that come about? I met I met them in uh, 2007, uh, just after Boxer came out. Uh, their their sound guy at the time, this uh, fellow from Philadelphia named Brandon Reed, he had he used to come to my shows when I would go go to the Kyber in Philly mm -hmm. back in the <laughs> very early 2000s. And um, anyway, he was on the road with them and they were playing in Toronto and he invited me to the show and I had, I, they were completely off my radar. I had never heard of them. So I went backstage after and met them and they were awesome. And it turned out that they were, yeah, most of them were fans of my, uh, a couple of records that I had put out. Mm. And then uh, anyway, then like four months later, I was, I was on tour opening for them in Europe. So the, our, our friendship uh, happened quite quickly and it was, it was a beautiful thing. Yeah. Man, those guys, I've, uh, I toured with them a little bit too and, and hanging around backstage with them. Th those guys know, they know everything about music. It was like a yeah. class. Ever, yeah. And it was like all different kinds of classes. With, with Brian, it'd be like some modern classical hand clap exercise or with Matt. Probably was like, check out the Hayden record. Anyways, <laughs> those guys are like that. It's amazing. I mean, they're amazing yeah. in a lot of ways. but. Yeah. Yeah, well, they're true. They're truly one of those bands where each member just brings something very unique to the table at a very high level, and it's the band sound is that true combination of what everyone brings yeah. to it. And that, I mean, that's yeah, yeah, that's kind of rare. And um, you shared uh, lyric writing with Matt. Is that right? Uh, yeah, I mean, it kind of um, it the the way that the collaboration takes place just generally speaking is uh, I will send him a song, a chord progression with me singing a melody on top, usually like b bullshit lyrics. Mm -hmm. And, and then I'll send him an instrumental version as well with no, me no melody on top and he'll work on it. And then, Sometimes he'll send me lyrics to my melody. Sometimes he'll create a totally new me uh, melody. Mm -hmm. And sometimes he'll do all of his words. Sometimes he'll take a phrase of mine or whatever. So, for instance, uh, are, are We Good song, he kept my melody and he kept the, the phrase, Are We Good? And then everything else, he just, mm -hmm. it was his. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's different combinations. Is that the first time you've done that with... with uh singing or lyrics yeah the in fact up until uh working starting to do this with matt um so i guess six years ago uh the first song that we worked together like this on came out on his first solo record serpentine prison mm. but before this situation with matt the only thing i'd ever done was uh a song called Trees Lounge that is co-written by Steve Buscemi only because I took um, words from his script oh. uh, from the movie Trees Lounge. So he became a co-writer right. of the song. Wow, that's fun. <laughs> yeah, so he gets like a, he gets a, a $4 check every year <laughs> for his part in that. And, uh, and then this project I was alluding to that didn't come into fruition uh, uh, from 67 years ago, that was the next step of, of collaborating. And that was a project I did where a novelist friend was writing a book. And I, as he sent me chapters, I wrote songs based on his book. Uh, and yeah, but that never uh, came out. So. Well, I hope it does. Sounds interesting. But I'm not, I'm not, the, I'm not the kind of guy who's in a boardroom writing songs with right. four or five people. And, yeah. In Hollywood, a big oak in desk. Hollywood. Yeah. With a guy coming in with BPMs every half an hour. <laughs> that is my dream, though. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, uh, another song you uh, collaborate on is is the single 
on a beach. I didn't call it on the beach, which is my favorite Neil Young record. Um, God, you're the second person that said God. that. And I, I concur, although it is that trifecta of uh, Zuma on a beach and uh, tonight's the night. That's like this yeah. golden three records, but yeah. Yeah. I lived in, <laughs> I, hear I lived in Topanga Canyon for one year and I had one oh, record and right. a subscription to the New Yorker and I stopped drinking coffee. <laughs> <laughs> so that's I shoot that sounds amazing that, my life was simple that year yeah um, yeah sounds good anyways this song on a beach is oh it's i have to say it's my favorite my favorite one to listen to right now uh and uh -huh. wa and watch um uh -huh. awesome and um the sentiment and, and again i'm going to just keep referring to the video as well um but it seems to be illustrating of a, a relationship um both bliss and possibly issues that's kind of bookmarked especially in the video with uh not complete happiness but the middle is beautifully happy and what are you talking about in this song are you talking about um you know addressing issues within a relationship or or just celebrating the differences or it's a it's a weird song because it's one of the few in the last few years where um, the lyrics were very immediate off the cuff. They just happened without thinking. And the backstory to this song is that it was uh, during the the lockdown or just um, towards the end of it. I I was invited by feist to do this um song writing exercise where 20 songwriters would join this email group and the moderator would collect so you'd write a song from scratch and record it every day for seven days mm. and at the end of the day you email it to the moderator and the next morning he sends out uh, SoundCloud link with everyone's songs from the day oh, before on it. And you sort of listen to it with your coffee in the morning and then you get back to work and write your next song. So it was, uh, it, it happened at an amazing time because I was on like the fourth version of my record and I was sick of some of the songs. Yeah. I just was, I, I, I knew there was, could it be, a, there was a better record in me, you know? And this, uh, this turned my whole record around because I ended up with, five new songs for the record Whoa. so I, I put a, a other ones that i was like this has got to be other <laughs> i was like man maybe not yeah um and you know there could be an element to when you just when you have brand new things and they're they're in you're inspired by them and yeah. excited that yeah. then you you put them on the top shelf so that could be the case but i don't think so i think it was a great inspired week anyway so on a beach was my day three contribution and I just picked up a bass and, you know, got to write a song today. This is fun. And I just sang this, this phrase, we're on a beach and we're drinking income taxes and you're fond of me. And it just became this very simple. So I didn't even know what I meant when I said, uh, we're drinking income taxes. So it's kind of like, I'm, I was just like, you know, like the sound of it worked yeah. for me. Yeah. And and so only after and and when people are asking me what I mean, I mean, like, well, I meant this. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but every anyway, every year my wife and I do do something good with our income tax returns because I guess because we're artists, we we get money back on like some other people. Yeah. But but uh, uh, the song is generally related to sort of the the idea of, of each person uh, hypnotizing there, this couple is hypnotizing one another with, you know, very basic hypnot hypnotist kind of wording of when you're trying to put someone in that state. And the, basically they're, they're just trying to find a quiet, beautiful place that they had when they first met and they're trying to get back, to that moment of of how they used to feel with all without all the bullshit in the world you right. know uh so it's it, very simple but I, I like the idea you know i thought and that's why i was like oh this is this would be a, a cool duet because i also thought it was creepy if it was just some dude hypnotizing a woman 
to, to liking him. Good you know, point. and it's like, <laughs> what a creep. But, <laughs> but if they're both doing it to back and forth, right. it, it kind of it sealed the deal a little more for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's great. Yeah, the video just uh, illustrates it all, just even more. Well, and it's got Steve in it. It's got so Steve that, yeah. in it. Yeah. And Matt. Um, no, yeah, Matt. Of course, yes, because Matt's not on the song, but he's uh, on yeah. the video. That's right. He's yeah. trying to get in on everything on your record. I can tell. He's yeah. Just, yeah just I'm sure he's calling you like, hey, hey, I, can I get in the video? <laughs> I got this hey, other I, idea. I, I ju- I have a, can I do the cover art? <laughs> um. All right. Well, I'd like to play uh, on the beach. On what? Wait, I did it. on a beach. Oh man, I did it. All right. I'd like to play on a beach. Is that cool? Yes. Yeah, All cool. right. Here we go. We're on a beach. Oh yeah, we're on a beach. We're drinking income taxes in the sand at our feet. We're on a beach. Oh yeah, we're on a beach. We're drinking income taxes and you're fond of me Just breathe out and in Keep your eyes on this ring as I swing it back and forth on this year string Our lids are heavy wings All the things that trouble you fall right out Taxes and the sand at our feet. We're on a beach. Oh, yeah, we're on a beach. We're drinking income taxes and you're fond of me. Sand at our feet We're on a beach Oh yeah, we're on a beach We're drinking income taxes And you're fond of me I wanna see Yeah, I mean really see All the beauty That's right in front of me I wanna be Oh yeah, I wanna be Where the sun rises Behind on trees This ain't meant to be Hey, listen to Ali Driver operate heavy machinery This ain't meant to be Hey, listen to Ali Driver operate heavy machinery Oh yeah, we're on the beach Oh yeah, we're on the beach we're drinking income taxes and we're out of reach We're on a beach, oh yeah, we're on a beach We're drinking income taxes and we're out of reach Again, my favorite song on the record. Probably no surprise. But um, the other thing I just remembered is that you left in some laughter oh, on the yeah, bridge, yeah. I think. Or a, yes. a, sort of a bridge. 
And yeah, a little J- Joni Mitchell vibes. And it kind of works when, when Matt's in the video. It's like, oh, that's Matt. You're like realizing it's Matt. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, he, he does make me laugh. No, I'm, ba- I'm basically laughing at that, the line, because it's a bit silly. Right. But, you know, because of course I had 79 <laughs> versions of every song. I had a version with that whole section edited out because I actually was not sure about that line, but in the end I sang it twice. So yeah, what can you do? <laughs> it's great. Uh, the, 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 I didn't catch the, the laugh either the first time around. So it's kind of a, it was kind of a fun Easter egg. It, it just flows oh, really good. well. Oh, no, nice, nice. Glad you didn't have a clean one. No laughter. I'm, I, I'm definitely known for laughing at, my own jokes and being able to laugh at myself. So Good. that's an important, important thing, I think. <laughs> so it sounds like historically you've, you've made your records all by yourself for the most part in your studio. Yeah. Yeah. Like 75% for sure. Yeah. And I, I know that this was kind of stretched out, but what do you have a, a routine or a process when you walk in the door, plug a particular instrument in? Do you, make coffee do you walk in and then walk out and come back an hour later so yeah when i'm when i'm recording i mean sorry when i'm writing songs i'll i'll hit record and i'll just uh my my instrument of choice generally is piano and i'll just sit at the piano and play chords and melodies and hum along sing along until i i find something and if things go well and i and i find something i find interesting um, I'll just keep playing it over and over again. And generally, I'll keep the recording of what I've done. And oftentimes, I'll base the actual recording of the song on that very first take of the piano part. You know, sometimes I'll redo it, but oftentimes the very first, you know, three hours of playing something there's a certain way you play it and there's a certain spirit that sometimes it's very hard to get back and if you base all the other playing around that one inspired moment uh, i think you can you can hear it at least i can so i i keep a lot of the early stuff that i record as i'm writing yeah that's great i like that idea I, i primarily play drums and I record drums for people remotely and I try if at all possible, once I get the song, I just load it up and I hit record and I just play through the song without ever hearing it. Oh, wow. And then I'll, then I'll then take two. And then usually around third take, I have a, a, a version of hopefully the spirit of take one and the cerebralness of take two <laughs> is there is there a good chance on that very first listen take that you've you just find the the general rhythm that you you end up uh you know working on after like, i'd say a chance a okay. um, few times i've just gone here it is and sometimes it gets cut up you yeah, know, yeah. Like the spirit on this crazy one is the best. Right. We'll just cut it up. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, for sure. Yeah, yeah. No, nothing wrong with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I'd like to talk about one more song, Miss Fort Erie. Okay. It's a really fun and miserable illustration of touring. Yeah, right. Uh, and right. I think you and I have probably toe to toe on touring and, and uh, years on the road, etc. So it really, it really spoke to me. But the, the really sweet uh, twist in, in this song is, and correct me if I'm wrong, it turns out to be almost a, a, a letter home. And the recipient of the letter kind of says, you're out there, celebrate it while you're out there. And then and then just get your ass home. Don't be a baby. <laughs> Again, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, I've almost had that exact experience in my life, so it might be skewed. Yeah. But um, I just really think that's such a sweet sentiment, and I don't want to give it away, but I think it uh, it all is truly illustrated at the end of the video to this song. Mm. Um, and another clever thing you do in the video is have your old videos in this video, which is cool. I love that. Oh, thank you. Thanks. But where are you with touring now? How do you weigh that against being home with family, it being your 
livelihood or, or vocation? Well, I'll tell you, I just finished three uh, rounds of touring. I was out for about two weeks for each run. Mm. And uh, I did, I loved it because I, I had just been home for so long. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and, and I, w- I, I don't want to be in the studio right now, which is a, an interesting thing for me. And it's because I just overstayed my welcome there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and and overstay my welcome at my house too uh yeah you, know, you know like my my son uh, he, he's eight basically asked me not to play my my new songs anymore because he was he was <laughs> so sick of them uh because i you know i'd be driving them places and listening to mix yeah. after mix so so he, he and my daughter you know it, it, she she can't tell me that she how she well she has yeah, sometimes she does her all done symbol when i play her song but <laughs> uh, but yeah he let he let me know that i had overstayed my welcome in both the house and in the studio so uh that be so w- with regards to touring it was amazing this time around uh for two reasons one is i i hadn't done it for so long it felt new and exciting so i actually had the the best time i've had maybe my life on the road and oh, this the second part of it was uh, that made it different and interesting was that i i made the call mostly for financial reasons to to not bring go with anyone so i was complete mm. solo to the next level meaning i was by myself in the car on airplanes getting to the gigs using uh, local sound technicians and I was concerned about it uh, at first, yeah. and then it was incredible. That each uh, technician that I met along the way was excited to not just hand over the mixing board to some hotshot who's coming through town. So they took extra care to do the sound, and they knew the rooms because they're local, and they did a great yeah. job. And then being on my own driving from show to show or it, it, I didn't have to make small talk with anyone. And I, and I don't get yeah. that kind of space at home. I, I hate to say it, it was incredible just having time okay. on my own. You know, I think it's, it's, yeah. I, re, I realize how important that that is to some extent for human beings to have just time to be in their own head, you know? Yeah. Well, I'm glad you, you had that. You weren't expecting that answer, were you? <laughs> no, I wasn't at all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the surprise. <laughs> um, well, the last thing I want to talk to you about is the role of video in your overall expression. Again, it's just so cohesive and it meshes so well with your songs, lyrically, visually. You know, the reason I'm not hugely interested in video is because sometimes it's just, oh, I hate this term, but I can't think of anything else. Eye candy to a song doesn't make mm-hmm. sense, you know, it doesn't mm-hmm. matter. Or it's just a song with just some random, you know, uninteresting visual aspect. Yeah. Not one of your videos are ever like that. Right. It's hard for me to imagine that you don't have both in mind when you begin something like this. Well, first of all, thank you. That's meaningful to me because I, t- I take the visual part of it very seriously and i enjoy it uh sometimes almost as just almost as much as the the music um whether i'm filming it with my you know my little canon camera as i did with the miss fort erie video or if i'm uh collaborating uh, with uh mostly with my friend yael who's a great director uh but i'm i you know i like to be involved in the editing and the the story or or whatever but sometimes the music part is not like enough in this doing this for a living and that i i I get once the music's done it's exciting for me to work on the artwork and get very involved in that and then work on the videos and get involved with that uh so that being said when i'm writing the songs i i know i don't really have the videos in mind but yeah did you study film? Oh, you know what happened? I, I I was in a band in high school and I was really into music. And then because my dad was a professor, he kind of 
instilled this like you know going to school thing and so in my last year of high school I, I had a radio show at the university radio station and I played like mud honey and all this stuff I was like very into it and when I had to make a call of what to take I took communications or radio and television and oh, okay. so that kind of got me into making videos for friends and stuff so I did do videos okay. from very early on yeah it was a long-winded answer for you it just makes for a richer experience of your songs and again i listened and watched all these new songs you know equally amazing yeah well yeah i, I and I, I i hope i don't sound like i'm taking all the credit but like i said my my friend yeah El stav directed both the east coast video and the mm -hmm. on a beach and and she knows what she's doing. She's awesome. So. Yeah, it's beautiful. All right. What's next? Do you have any um, shows booked this year? Yeah, well, I'm, I have a, a, a show I'm uh, really excited about. I'm doing my first true headline show at uh, Massey Hall in Toronto. That's a that's a big one. I've, I've played before, and I do an annual benefit concert there for my daughter's school and the community. But... Um, to do my own my own show there is something I've, I've thought of for years so i'm doing that and then yeah i'll, I'll probably do a, a true tour for the record in the in the fall great are both of these solo or are they with band or do you know uh yes yeah, so some combination of of the two yeah. yeah all right well i will look for you in the fall this record is great oh. man well, thank you, and thanks for t thanks for taking the time to, to speak with me. Yeah. Of course. All right, I'll see you out there in, at an airport or something, maybe yeah. someday, or at a okay. concert. Sounds good. Right. Thank you. Okay. Take it easy. Bye. Bye. Why? 
last bit about the blind shit that was said to make you smile. You're meant to be right here. You're meant to be right here with me for all these miles. You're meant to be right here. You're meant to be right here with me for all these miles.